So this is a bit of an extended version of the original video and it shows it from the very start. I remember this is the back of a canvas that I was working on and I just wanted to put a nice little thing on the back. Um, there's the reference picture I was using of Larry, but I don't know why I was using that because I wanted to make Larry a lot more older and uh, fatter in the face because that reference picture, and I'll show you later on in the video, it looks too much like the sketch that's on the back of this canvas, which was the original front. I've only painted with clay and this time I'm using acrylics, so I'm still kind of getting used to it really. It's it's, it's nice to work with. It's a, it's, it was a nice heavy acrylic to work with because um, I didn't really put much water with it. Here you can see this is probably the next day. Um, a bit, bit more detail going on to the face, the hat and the background and the suit. Uh, Ralph Terry's houses and in... In the middle there, uh, with a mill and a chimney at the start there. Um, like I said, there was there was no actual sketch of this. There was no plan. I literally had no idea where this was going to go. In my head, I kind of was. I was thinking of my uh, clay paintings and the industrial scenes. Um, so I'd, I kind of had an idea where it was going to end up. But as for the detail of the actual scene he was stood in. Seriously, I had no idea. I didn't want to copy something. Um, the reference picture showed him in front of terraced houses, a quite a nice view, but I didn't want to go in and just do a straight up copy of um, of that one. And again, you can see what I'm working with there in the foreground. I've got the top of an ice cream tub with my paints in, and I've got some makeup brushes, which I use for adding pencil lead to the uh, the clay paintings on the right. When they're finished, I go in and put shadows and the smoke in with pencil lead and I use makeup brushes to apply that. So I, uh, I'm i quite comfortable using makeup brushes. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But I'm quite comfortable using makeup brushes. So I thought, why not? I do actually invest in some brushes and uh, some more paint later on in this painting. Look at that face. I mean, it looks so rough. And at this stage, if this was... If this was being done in clay, I would be pre-mixing lighter shades now to start going over the top for the cheeks, the middle of the chin, the nose. And what I found really nice to do using acrylic paint was actually doing that mixing on the canvas instead of away from the canvas, if that makes sense. So adding a, a tiny little bit more water to the paint, and I, I didn't notice about acrylic paint, but kind of using it in a watercolour way, like making sure it touches the layer underneath slightly and kind of brings some of that underneath colour through. At this stage, I'm still realising that I'm, I'm miles away from getting any kind of resemblance or any kind of decent features. So I'm just persisting, really. It's still, at this stage, it still could have been painted over, really. Um, if it had gone downhill from this, then it would probably have been painted over. So a big jump here, you can see the terrace houses have now got windows and lights and doors. And you can see I'm making a big, a big move on the canvas there. That's going to be a mill. And unless I'm actually copying a specific mill or design, then I'll kind of use generic ones. So I think I end up with maybe two, three, four mills in this one. And I just make sure the windows are slightly different and uh, the framing are slightly different, different colours and stuff like that. The brickwork, different. So we have the, the like the terracotta kind of orangey burnt red in the background there. And then a nice big brown bricked mill going in right next to it. And you can see as I'm applying it, I've got the acrylic really thick. So it's taking a few strokes to actually get on. And again, at this stage, I'm not worrying about any of this detail showing up in the end products because I know it's going to have many, many uh, layers going over the top. It's going to be left overnight to dry multiple times. And um, so now I'm centering and kind of know where my center is now. So I'll put that little roof on there to give me an overall idea of where to put the rest of the features but features of which I've still got no idea. On the left there, you can see St. Michael's Church has come into play. And that gave me an idea then, because I am painting Laura. I was down at Angel Meadow a few weeks ago, and I did get to see the Lowry, the Lowry steps and actually walk up and down the steps. So again, as I'm kind of painting different parts of this painting, I'm still thinking about the other side of it and 
Now I'm thinking, well, I need to add the steps now and I need to add a little bit more detail on the church. But as you can see, the mill windows, I mean, it's quite boring watching all these windows go in. So I do skip a lot of this, but it needs to be done. And I know this white layer that's going on is going to dry darker. So get it on as quick as I can. And then I know I can let it dry and then come back to it. You can see the very start there in the middle of a gas ometer going in as I'm putting more highlights onto Lowry's face there. And you can see the detail has gone into the church on the left. The steps have gone in from Lowry's um, Irk Place painting. Um, obviously, I've changed this perspective. And at this point, I'm now in my mind's eye imagining the terrace houses to be Irk Place and all those forgotten streets in and around Angel Meadow. So it gives me a reference point. Um, at this point as well, I'm still really putting a lot of paint on the face because I'm noticing that all the highlights that I put on after about 10 minutes, they, they dry so dark that from a, from a clay painting point of view, when I put the clay on, it goes on exactly the same color as it was mixed. But now obviously using the paint, it dries darker or dries lighter depending on which way I'm doing it. So I'm overly highlighting all the most important areas, the cheeks, the top of the point of the nose, the ridge of the nose and the chin. And I'm also working on his chin line, his jaw line and how that matches up with the suit that he's wearing. Um, quite interesting to, to watch this back actually because you can see how many layers are actually going on top of it. I mean, this, this painting took six days and I'm guessing over those six days, I worked on his face every day, just just doing the highlighting and the little the little tweaks. I, I, I liked the, the way the eyes looked at this point. Like he was really looking in. And I didn't want to go proper in with like too much detail because I know I could have, like I said, I could have worked on this for months and, you know, got it looking really, really, really realistic. But I, di I didn't want to. I, I really liked how it was looking. So the enjoyment of just, you know, it working was, was really good. This is the gasometer that goes in. So again, <clears throat> from one of my other paintings uh, in clay, I did the Bradford Gasworks down in Clayton. So I already had experience of doing a gasometer and this one I wanted a little less detail on. Uh, I didn't want it to stand out that much. I just wanted it to be part of something. Um, you can see there's no building behind it, which does make it stand out. So a little later on, I correct that and I put a building behind it just to make it, just to make it fit in a little bit more, make it a little bit more subtle. Um, I'm just highlighting the, uh, I don't even know what you would call the, the structure of a gasometer. Obviously, it's, it's just a lot of straight lines for me. Uh, and then obviously you bend them to make it look like a, a spherical, is that, is that the right word? A spherical object? I've got no idea. So yeah, that's the gasometer going in. And the windows of the uh, orange mill have gone in as well. The windows on the right are drying, so you can see how they're darkening because they're drying. And you can see there's no straight lines on those windows, and it doesn't matter because they've got no frames on at the moment. That's just the, uh, the reflective background light, I suppose, or foreground light that's bouncing off those windows. So um, so don't be looking at that. Here's a little clip that I've probably filmed halfway through. Here's the detail on the houses. Again, not much detail, just windows, window frames, doors, and there are... Lowry's little people again undetailed because at this stage I had to the right of Lowry there you can see much more detail on his suit now his, his little waist jacket and his tie and his handkerchief in his pocket that's all gone on and you can see a lot more detail on the face has gone on and I was at this stage I was really happy with that face you can see the, the steps to the left the York Place steps on the left and you can see chimneys have gone in another uh, another factory another mill has gone in over his shoulder the smoke's gone in on the chimneys and I didn't film anything else in between that point. So this ends up being the end product, um, which I'm really happy about. There's Martin Zero with two mill owners stood on the banks of the River Medlock. 
You can see the steps to the left there, the Irk Place steps in St. Michael's. And I'm really, really happy with that. You can see the, the culvert there for the, for the Medlock. And this is on the other side. So this is what I was talking about. That's the sketch of Laurie I was originally doing. Laura is sat there looking a little bit younger and he's got a painting right next to him. That was supposed to be the original piece, but now that's ended up as a bonus piece on the back. And there he is, packaged, sealed, and ready to be put on display. It's been it's been an, a, a mad adventure, this one, you know, painting this has been amazing. And behind the scenes, I've literally got like three other acrylic paintings on the go currently. So, you know what, I, I, I enjoy painting with clay, but I've really enjoyed the freedom that painting with acrylic has given me. Don't forget to check out YouTube forward slash Scully Ranks and Facebook forward slash Duppy Art. Nice one.